Well, they have funded it, uh, the TAME study. I was alerted to this by uh, David Mainz. He's a dietitian with a does a lot of uh, speaking for health and prevention, to mostly to dentists, but other groups as well. He alerted me to the TAME study originally, um, but it, the TAME study was designed and written up and approved for years before it's finally been funded. Uh, you can see this is uh, September 8th, 2017. It's an announcement on the uh, USA Today and the uh, NBC Nightly News. Um, <clears throat> What is the TAME study? Why is it interesting? Um, TAME stands for Targeting Aging with Metformin. Um, I'm going to go through that study today. Uh, there's a lot of interesting uh, components of this. You, this is uh, just one presentation, one slide deck you can find on the internet. You can find dozens of them on TAME. Um, <clears throat> The principal investigator will be near Barzilai. Dr. Barzilai is very excited uh, about the idea of approving a medication for the indication of aging. His point is the big pharma poured a lot of money into uh, drug development, but none of them are pouring money into drug development for aging because FDA has yet approved aging as a a disease indication. But as you'll see through this uh, slide deck, aging is the number one uh, risk factor for most of the diseases that we're looking at here, uh, mo most of these chronic diseases. Um, <clears throat> now, then the question comes up, why would you look at, um, here's some of the contributors, by the way, and here's a couple of points. Here's uh, Nir Barzilai. He's the principal investigator. Uh, I think Jill Crandall is working on the MILES study there with uh, the um, Einstein Longevity Group, uh, Albert Einstein Medical School in uh, New York. But as you see, huge number of contributors to this study. Uh, the National Institutes of Aging actually uh, developed this study, and it wasn't like uh, most studies where the principal investigator and his or her team develop a, an idea, then a proposal, they write a grant application, they send it to NIH or one of the funding agencies, they then review it. That's not what happened. As you can see here, there are uh, dozens of contributors and hundreds of uh, geriatricians, doctors who study aging, who've been behind this study for a long time. Now, why would uh, doctors who've been, who study aging, suggest metformin at age 65. Well, we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Um, <clears throat> but first, an introduction. I'm Ford Brewer, F-O-R-D-B-R-E-W-E-R -E -E with PrevMed, P-R-E-V-M-E-D. Uh, heart attack, stroke, cancer, disability prevention, to, uh, dementia prevention. Um, <clears throat> I do these YouTubes to help provide uh, some basic and some a little bit more detailed than basic uh, medical scientific information around prevention and uh, longevity. So um, <clears throat> why would hundreds of um, geriatricians say we should effectively put metformin in the water once we're age 65? And many would say even younger. Um, well, that's actually the, uh, what I want to cover in these slides today. Uh, the first one is, uh, if you're one of those statin haters, uh, you may want to cover your eyes. This is basically some life tables uh, as we age. And this is for people that are not taking statins and people that are taking simvastatin. This was, I mean, very typical research. And you wonder why uh, I had a patient once who came in and he'd had some cardiac symptoms. Um, he was in his 60s. He said, I went to the ER. They couldn't find anything wrong with me. The doc said, you may want to take a statin. Um, I went to a cardiologist. He said, I can't find anything wrong with you. You may want to take this statin. He came to me and I said, well, I can find what's wrong with you. You've got some inflammation and you may want to take this statin. He, he got very frustrated, but <clears throat> there are reasons 
why the medical uh, community is recommending things like statins. And uh, metformin is certainly not something that's non-standard. It's actually the standard for uh, type, two, uh, type 2 diabetes. Um, part of the problem, I think, is that there's a lot more of us with type 2 diabetes and at least insulin resistance than we recognize. But let's go back to the TAME study. Age itself is the strongest risk factor for age-related diseases. Now that's sort of like uh, so obvious, it makes you wonder, what are we saying? Well, <clears throat> look at these diseases. Heart disease, cancer, um, stroke, emphysema, and pneumonia, diabetes, and look at these, uh, and the list goes on, kidney disease, Alzheimer's, you name it. So uh, <clears throat> Alzheimer's, for example, goes, goes a little bit longer, uh, but most of these others start cranking up in the uh, 40s and 50s. Now let me just go back and make this statement. Hearts don't have a shelf life of 60, 60 years. Uh, Cancers don't automatically just appear at, at between 45 and 60. Kidney disease, for example, doesn't have, kidneys don't have a shelf life of 60 years. What's going on here? Well, if you're looking at me in this graph and saying, well, duh, we're getting older. That's the point. What is it about getting older that's causing these problems? Well, Again, it's biochemical, and we'll get there in just a minute, but let's cover another issue. You remember I mentioned near Barzillai was very interested and excited about, basically this was his point. He wants to change a major concept out there. What we do these days is we target a specific disease. You remember the last slide? Um, <clears throat> we want to target, what we're currently doing is tar targeting heart disease, brain disease, chronic kidney disease. He's excited about the whole idea of saying, look, let's look at aging and its impact on all of our organs. In other words, <clears throat> let's put the cardiologists, the neurologists, the nephrologists out of business because we, we move back one step prior to all of this and stop the cellular components of aging. If we do that, we're at, we're at a whole new universe in terms of managing health and disease. Again, all the splitters out there, the, the specialists, let's put them out of business by decreasing aging or the metabolism of aging. Now, I've mentioned the metabolism of aging a couple of times and we've talked about uh, the place that metformin plays in this area. Now, <clears throat> again, I know there are a lot of metformin haters out there. There is no drug that I'm aware of. Uh, actually, even uh, I've spent some time as a toxicologist in industry, and I can tell you, air, uh, I mean, too much oxygen has killed people. Too much um, water has killed people. So uh, any prescription drug has its issues. So metformin is not alone, but it's actually far more benign than it's being given credit for. Don't want to get into that debate. Here's what I wanted to cover, though. You say, well, what is it that metformin's got to do with aging? Well, <clears throat> these uh, dozens and hundreds of geriatricians throughout the world, when, they, when the Institute of, uh, National Institute of Aging says, well, what's causing all of this heart disease, stroke, cancer, dis uh, dementia? Their perspective is, duh, it's uh, glu glucose metabolism cell respiration, the ability of the cell to generate energy. And <clears throat> humans, have, humans are different from uh, fungi and molds. They have a little bit more complicated uh, and far more efficient and effective. We breathe oxygen. That's because we use a TCA cycle, tricar uh, tricarb tricarbon uh, cycle as well a tricarboxylic uh, acid cycle, as well as oxidative phosphorylation. The oxidative phosphorylation gives us about 30 units or ATP units of energy compared to what a fungus does, which is just uh, glycolysis. 
This is only a portion of glycolysis. It's actually the area that's impacted by um, metformin. A fungus which makes wine and cheese only has uh, glycolysis. It only breaks down glucose. We as humans take that broken down uh, glucose, the three, and, uh, the three carbon, we break a six carbon down uh, glucose down to three carbons, take that three carbon and burn it for other stuff. But way back up in the very beginning where we're doing glycolysis, just like that fungus, a lot of our uh, metabolism, our um, cell biology begins to break down as we get old. The insulin receptors, for example, um, other enzymes, and we've identified a lot of them. Um, AMPK, mTOR, uh, mammalian target of rapamycin, uh, CERT1, you know, and you see these uh, mentioned in things like uh, NMM, um, other uh, medications that are being targeted for longevity. So the ability to uh, bring sugar out of the blood into the cell, this is the cell membrane by the way, uh, bring sugar out of the blood into the cell and then metabolize it, do the first components of metabolism before we take it into glycolysis, then that TCA cycle, then electron uh, transport. All of those begin to age. As they do, we start to develop plaque in our arteries. We start to develop uh, heart disease. Oh, that plaque in the arteries then leads to heart disease, kidney disease, uh, dementia. So again, we're going, <clears throat> this TAME study is going back and saying, Let's take a look at the original uh, insults in terms of aging and see if we can have an impact. Now, why metformin? It's inexpensive. Biguanides have been used for years. Um, so uh, the worst thing that you can see is the Mayo Clinic saying lactic acidosis, and the Mayo Clinic's wrong there. Look at the Cochrane studies. Um, it is, there is not a significant risk. Uh, for the general population for uh, lactic acidosis with uh, metformin. Maybe the other biguanides, but not that one. And again, metformin is already the number one uh, drug being recommended by the American uh, College of Endocrinology. So, <clears throat> again, I know there are plenty of metformin haters out there. Look, I'm just reporting the, uh, the facts. Uh, we do use metformin, we use a lot. Um, I'll be covering some other issues around this uh, in other videos. Thank you for your interest.